Hi, I'm Pam Cameron. I'd like to share some stories about Sport, Ship Dog of the Great Lakes. Here's a photo of Sport standing in front of the hyacinth, his ship, probably with the cook, given the white jacket. And if you look carefully on the ground, it looks pretty dirty, maybe coal or cinders, dirt. And of course, that's connected with all the supplies that the hyacinth took to all the lighthouses around Lake Michigan. Early in my research, I found an article that was in the United States Lighthouse Service Bulletin written by Captain Maynard of the Hyacinth. It was written in September 1926. And Captain Maynard said, Sport was just a dog, but he was a good dog. He was a good shipmate. He was a friend to everybody and everybody's friend. As I continued with research, I often thought of that, knowing that whenever someone takes the time to write something down, it'll be there in the future for researchers. I also enjoyed going to the Library of Michigan and finding books there that I was not able to enter alone anywhere. So that shows the value of libraries. Captain Maynard also wrote that sport was known all around Lake Michigan. In fact, sport was known by more people than the crew. No, they didn't know the crew because the crew was working, but sport was out walking around at all the places that they stopped. So I like to think he had his paws all over the shores of Lake Michigan. So here's a map we have in the book showing some of the ports and lights and a reminder of the shape of Lake Michigan. Now I have a photo of Sport here that shows him on the deck of the ship. You can see the wood deck here. Two crewmen have ha are having fun with that life preserver around Sport. And I took this photo to veterinarians, to the United Kennel Club historians, and as best they could determine, they felt he was part Newfoundland and part retriever. We laughed because they said, oh, I wish you had a photograph in color, but of course we don't. So using the traits of those two dog breeds helped me write episodes for the book. The first I'd like to share with you is when deliveries were being made to Cana Island in Door County, Wisconsin. Now, the highest synth is in the background here. Wouldn't have been able to come in too shallow of an area. And that meant small boats were brought in with supplies. Plenty of supplies could have been fit in this ship, in the boat. And because Captain Maynard said, no sh boat could go ashore without sport. Knowing sport's a swimming dog, here, where is he? He's right there. In the text, I have the episode reading that as the sh little boat got close to shore, the crew would have thrown the line in, sport would have jumped in and brought the boat into shore. And I know that's possible because I've seen that happen at present day uh, Newfoundland competitions. Sport got the boat to shore. The lighthouse keeper probably ran out and pulled it in the rest of the way. The crew probably had fun with that, but for sure the family at the lighthouse would have had fun. A dog is bringing in all their supplies. Now the hyacinth also took care of the buoys out on the lake. Here's a buoy out in front of uh, Big Sabo Light in Ludington. This crewman is probably adjusting the light. Sometimes these buoys had bells. And the hyacinth would have brought these buoys in and out, out in winter and back out in in the springtime. Here's what's happened. The crewman has dropped his canvas tool bag. Sports retriever characteristics are kicking in and he's doing a nice arc of a jump into the water to retrieve that valuable tool bag. I was lucky to find two photographs of Sport and his baseball team. Oh, where is it? <laughs> there it is. There you go. If you look carefully you can see Sport down here. And there's the team. H on their uniforms for Hyacinth. We know that Captain Maynard bought their uniforms because he wanted them to have fun wherever they were at night, perhaps in Milwaukee or any port along Michigan or Wisconsin. They would have played teams from other ships or perhaps a local team. 
Now I needed to have a little ex excitement at that baseball episode. So I imagined that there was a team that didn't know about sport. And someone on that team is like, no, get the dog, get the mutt off the field. We're not playing with a dog. Well, up in the stands, those people knew about sport. And they started chanting, no, ch sport, 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 sport. No way were they not going to have sport play that night. And sport played. And as we know, he always had to have someone bat for him. In my research, I always was looking for something major that had happened on Lake Michigan, some disaster, or that sport had rescued someone, but I couldn't find it. But what I did find was that sport had been lost in Chicago when the Hyacinth had gone there to get supplies. So here's sport. Sniffing around, the captain blows the whistle. Sports wandered too far, and he doesn't hear that whistle. And in those days of few dog licenses or identifications, no chips, few dog rescue organizations, there were probably a lot of strays around. And a man in Chicago saw sport and probably felt he'd be a good watchdog or a guard dog, and he took him. We don't know how many days sport was in Chicago, but the good news is we know that a man who was driving an ice wagon, I wish I knew his name. I'd try to find his ancestors or his relatives. And that man said, oh, no, this is a ship dog. You can't have him. We need to get him back to his ship. And the ice man took sport down to the dock. Well, sports ship was gone. They had continued on for their deliveries. I'm sure they were sad to leave. But what was there was the passenger ship Indiana. In those days, there were lots of passenger ships that took families on day trips or over for vacations to resorts in Michigan or up through Wisconsin. I have a photo of the Indiana here. There's the Indiana. People up on the bow so you can get a sense of the size of the ship. And Captain Redner was the captain of the Indiana. And he also recognized Sport and he looked down and said, we'll take him back. We'll get him back to Milwaukee. So Sport got on the Milwaukee or on the Indiana. Now, I don't have any photos or any written documentation of what went on on the ship. So I imagine because there were families on that ship, there were lots of children. And the word spread that there was a dog on the ship. It was a big dog. And it was a dog that they were taking back to the ship that the dog lived on. And the kids are getting pretty excited and they're asking their parents, can we go down and see the dog? We want to go see the dog. And the parents are saying, yep, you can go see the dog. And so the children started going down to the fast freight area of the ship. And here they are talking this to the steward. Here's Sport getting hugs. Here are two girls talking about Sport. This page is very important to me because I hope it helps children see that 100 years ago, children loved dogs just like we love dogs now. I also like to imagine that the children of that day told their parents and they went home and told their friends. And that was one way that sports story was spread by storytelling. Sport got back to his ship that night. There's his crew. Happy to see him. We haven't talked about where did sport sleep on the Hyacinth? That night, he fell asleep to the sway of the ship and the sound of the water. Sport was a ship dog, and this ship was his home. Now, we have a historical note at the end of the book, 
And part of that historical note is about 1926, when Captain Maynard wrote that Sport had passed away in Ludington, Michigan on July 19th. And that the next day, July 20th, they had buried Sport at Sea, two miles off of Ludington. Last summer, we had a service to remember that. The U.S. Coast Guard laid a wreath on the water. The Port of Ludington Maritime Museum was part of the planning, as was the Sabo Point Lighthouse Keepers Association. It was a very meaningful day to remember Sport. I also would like to hope that Sports Story will encourage families to visit historical sites in Michigan. I imagine people standing at the base of a lighthouse and looking out on the lake and imagining a ship coming in with a dog, or perhaps climbing the spiral staircase to the lantern room and having a larger view of Lake Michigan and thinking about the children who lived in lighthouses. Thank you to all the adults who have shared sports story to, in the, with the children in your lives. I'd also like to thank the Library of Michigan for their work, for the literacy, history, and culture of Michigan. If anyone has information about sport, please let me know, or light tenders. I love to learn more. I also have lots more information that I present to adult groups because there's some backstory about the crew of the ship that I could not include in the picture book. Thank you.